All right. So uh, I, I want to next bring up a man which I don't think needs an introduction. Uh, he has done something in his, in his career as a professor that I envy, that I'm hoping to do. Uh, he is the professor who has actually tried to be personally fired by Larry Ellison, uh, which should be on the top of your CV at all times. Um, so David DeWitt was a professor at uh, University of Wisconsin. He actually did great things uh, with Gamma and um, uh, Paradise. And now he's a technical fellow at Microsoft in Madison. That, this assumes I know how to run a Windows laptop. Yes. So. <laughs> So uh, I'm fortunate to have known Mike a really, really long time. And uh, some of you can't believe this, uh, that I've actually known Mike 44 years. So I arrived at Michigan in the fall of 1970. And in my very first graduate class was Mike Stonebreaker as the TA. And I remember at the time, I, I'd come from a small school in the East, not you know a Harvard or Princeton. I had a degree in chemistry, and I, I was really you know, nervous first semester graduate student. And then I met Mike, and I discovered, even though I had, had only had a few computer science courses, I knew, knew more about software than Mike did. So I knew it was going to be OK. <laughs> so in 71, Mike finished a PhD. It was not in database systems, even though you know, there were database activities going on at Michigan at the time. Um, it was. Uh, in you know, random Markov models of random chains or something like that. And at the time, um, there was, when Mike was finishing, there was gossip around the department about fights with his advisor. Um, and I got to know his advisor really well because I sailed with his advisors for the rest of my graduate career at Michigan. And if you go to the genealogy pages, <laughs> it doesn't appear that Mike actually got graduated, or Arch graduated any more students after Mike, even though he didn't retire, retire for another 23 years. Now, Mike, <laughs> Mike Caffarella disputes that fact. And there may have been one or two other students, but Arch and Mike did not get along, even though Arch was a really great guy. So, <laughs> <laughs> so and, and you know, how did I pick these events? I just sat down, I wrote, took a piece of yellow paper, I wrote out these things. They are not meant to be inclusive. So in, in 73, Mike, as we know, uh, with Gene Long, started the Ingress Project. And you know, since he really didn't know much about software, this was a huge leap. And it was, it was in some ways, to portend Mike's entire career. At every turn of events, Mike took a huge leap and changed our entire field. Um, and you know, had he and Pat, Pat, Pat Selinger's here, who uh, uh, start, was part of the team that started System R, they really you know, led the entire field in an entirely different direction. Um, so I didn't do anything. I was a computer architect as a grad student. I, I came to Wisconsin as a faculty member. I was told, teach a database class. And that's how I got into uh, uh, databases. And I used Ingress in my very first class. And there were a few bugs in that first version. We were running it on, with deck writers on PDP 1145s. And I discovered this TA of mine from a long time ago was the guy in charge of this project. So uh, Mike and I reconnected um, in 76. Now, I really got introduced. Mike invited me. At that time, there was a series of conferences being held at Berkeley on distributed systems. And got invited to one of the early Berkeley workshops. Mike introduced me to a lot of the key figures of the field at the time. And I got to hear Mike talk about distributed ingress. And I don't know how these scans worked. Oh, they worked OK. So these are actually real scans. They're not made up. They're, I took out some of the old papers and got out my scanner and scanned them. So one of the things Mike talked about in this talk was he pontificated about the role of God in distributed ingress. <laughs> Now, you think I'm kidding. If you look at that, this is a scan. Mike says, we will see the existence of God as a very fundamental question. <laughs> so all, already, I'm, you know, I'm this junior assistant professor. I go to this database conference. I meet all the gods of the field of the time. And then there's this really tall guy talking about God in front of this group of people. And you should read the paper. If you don't have it, I'll send you a copy of the paper. So. <laughs> Now, this is one of the things that Mike did that probably nobody in this room has ever read about or ever actually even heard of. And in 79, long before Mike wrote about the kinds of distributed or parallel systems one could build, Mike actually had a small project called Muffin. And I won't tell you what that stands for. You can figure it out yourself. Uh, it's probably not polite. Um, and that's the cover of the Muffin project. So it was by, for, by five years the first um, parallel 
uh, shared nothing database system that was, that was built. Uh, it, if you look into the paper, he's got these application cells, which is where the applications connect, and D cells, which are like single instances of Ingress running. And so he, by five years, predated the first work in shared nothing parallel database systems. At the time, I was building a shared memory thing. I should have looked at what Mike was doing. I was doing the wrong thing. Um, but Mike was really, really ahead of the, uh, the head of the curve on shared nothing database systems. Now, the other thing that you don't know about, you know, sometimes Mike is viewed as a little harsh and off people. But uh, at the time, I, you know, I was really a w w babe in the woods when it came to building database systems. Maybe I still am. Uh, and I was trying to build a parallel database machine called Direct. And Mike made that system possible because Mike, Mike made the resource. We reused a lot of pieces of the Ingress code. Mike made a number of his full-time programmers, including Bob Epstein and Eric Allman, available to me to help with the project. And um, without Mike's support, there would have been no tenure for DeWitt. I would have never gotten that code running. I'd never built a database system before. Um, and Mike really, uh, not only did, has he acted as a mentor for many years, but his support during that period of my career was really, really, truly instrumental. Uh, 83, I got to go on sabbatical at Berkeley. Uh, uh, we, we had a really amazing group of people there. Uh, Frank, uh, uh, Frank Olkin, Randy Katz, uh, Mike uh, Len Shapiro, David Wood is now an architect. Um, and I did a, a really nice, we had a nice study group, did main memory database paper. Uh, we did some really good work that came out, hybrid hash join and, and uh, group commit algorithms. Um, and, it was really, it was an amazing experience for me to go sit at Berkeley um, and get hosted by Mike. 84 wasn't so good. So I remember I, I published this paper on Wisconsin Benchmark. And I, and I remember still the day I was sitting at my desk in our old building and Mike called um, and really yelled at me. And I stood up at attention <laughs> because Mike was really upset that commercial ingress for this particular query, one query out of like the whole batch, was much worse than the Brittany database machine and much worse than universe ingress. How could this possibly be right? Uh, and he really did yell at me. And that was sort of like the only time in my career, except when I joined Microsoft. Uh, <laughs> when, he, when I joined Microsoft, Mike also yelled at me. So. Uh, but Larry Olson really learned the meaning of tenure because what Andy said was really true. Larry couldn't believe how bad the Oracle numbers were. And he called up the department chair at the time and tried very hard to get me fired. But this was the only time in the 44 years I've known Mike that he's actually yelled at me and really yelled at me. Now, for those of you that have been around the field for a long time, you know that our entire field, including Mike Carey, myself, Jeff Naughton, everybody went on the OO detour except Mike. Um, so Mike crushed the rebellion with the famous quad chart. And, and for his daughters, Mike is, if you don't know Mike's talks, every one of Mike's talks includes a quad chart. In the old days, they used to be on this, cell, you know, this cellophane stuff. We did slides, and Mike would draw them at the last minute. There's always a, an upper right-hand corner. OK, so we have simple data, complex data, no query and query. The, the, the rebellion was down in the lower right, um, and Mike was in the upper right. So he, he basically crushed the rebellion with this one quad chart. Then he wrote a book, because the, the, you know, he needed to have a book to explain the quad chart to the unwatched smashes. <laughs> then in 97, Mike uses the book and the quad chart to sell Illustra. Uh, so, you know, first he crushes the rebellion, and then he, you know, with his quad chart, then he writes a book to explain the quad chart, then he sells the company, um, and as we know, Illustra was a very successful company. What you don't know is that at two in the morning, Jim Gray was reading the, the filings, the SEC filings, calls me up and says, you can't believe how much Mike sold that company for. <laughs> true, this is a true story. Now, in, in, in 2000, uh, there was a project that Mike did called Project Sequoia, which was an attempt to use data, applied database technology to earth science and uh, applications. Uh, and Mike and Jim and uh, Jeff Dozier um, tried to explain to NASA why NASA might want to use this for a mission to planet Earth. And I was actually on a NASA committee sort of evaluating alternatives. Needless to say, NASA didn't listen to these three distinguished people and mission to planet Earth was a bust for the most part. 
But it inspired Jim to go off and uh, use SQL Server to do Sloan. So some good uh, did come out of it in the end. Um, now, 19, 2002, uh, Mike Franklin. Where's Mike Franklin? Oh, I thought I saw Mike here. Oh, good, I can pick on him. He, he hit the trifecta. He rejected, managed in one conference to reject papers by myself, Mike Stonebreaker, and Jim Gray. Uh, and we were sitting around sort of bemoaning the direction Sigma had taken. And we did what every good academic, <laughs> we did what every good academic does when their papers are rejected. We started our own conference. <laughs> And that winter, we held the first CIDR conference, which has been a highly successful, very small venue conference that we run every other year um, uh, in, at Asilomar in California. So that was 2002. Click. Uh, 2005, I got to go on another sabbatical with Mike. I'm always, Mike and I are always trying to find time to work together. And you know, maybe they'll bury us side by side, and we actually can work together. So I had, a, I, I had a year at MIT. It was an amazing experience getting to work with everybody at Vertica and, um, and Mike. Uh, truly, really a, a wonderful experience. Very sad to leave. Two-body problem, back to Madison. Um, 2008. Uh, <laughs> Stonebreaker and DeWitt. And, and this was really. <laughs> There's, there's this MapReduce paper uh, that came out, and Mike and I were just incensed, you know? And it really, you know, we know it was a breakthrough in programming, but, but those people had never read the literature. So Mike and I write a couple blog posts that Vertica uh, gladly posts for us. And that was, finally I got slash dotted. We both got slash dotted for being total idiots. Uh, we didn't know anything about anything. And it was really, uh, somebody's collected those posts, they're posted somewhere on the web. Um, uh, we really were raked over the coals for, for that uh, post. But then why are those MapReduce fanboys all building SQL, parallel SQL database systems today? <laughs> it's really true, nobody writes in MapReduce anymore. It's, <laughs> so I was really pleased when I even saw Google has a SQL uh, database system now. So anyway, that was 2008, um, present. So Mike is 70 and a half. You, wouldn't, you really wouldn't know it from looking at him. Um, he really has an uns, had an unsurpassed impact on our field. And the main thing that he's done is he never has let the field be content polishing round balls. He's always taking, taken these huge intellectual leaps, whether it's to go from Markov chains. Maybe that wasn't such a big leap. Who would want to continue to still be working on Markov chains? <laughs> To, to building one of the first relational database systems. And it must have been an amazing experience to be in competition with the, with the IBM Almond and people uh, in that. Uh, then on to uh, ADT Ingress, and then Postgres, and Illustra, um, uh, you know, and then all the systems uh, since then. So uh, this is really, he's been uh, maybe a thorn in the side to, to the field, but he really has had just really amazing impact, and our field really owes a lot to him. Uh, he's, as I said earlier, I'm here today uh, because the, of the support he gave me as an uh, untenured assistant professor, and without that, my career would have gone nowhere, and I think a lot of people in this room would say the same thing. Uh, And I will say, and you know, I will cry at this point, I'm an easy crier. We had a really good friend in Jim, and I know if Jim were still alive today, Jim would be here celebrating Mike's career along with the rest of us. <laughs> and, and this is a picture I never expect to see, which is Mike sitting in a lazy boy with his feet up <laughs> while the remote control is had watching TV. So thank you very much, Mike, for everything.